Power laws also occur with certain types of phase transitions. A phase transition is when a system changes properties uh, qualitatively, there's a major change in properties, as a parameter is, is varied continually. So the familiar example of freezing water, for instance, water goes from liquid, um, a little bit above zero degrees Celsius, to solid, a little bit below zero degrees Celsius. So it's a sudden change. There's no in-between state. It goes from liquid to solid, just like that. And that happens right at the critical temperature, the, the freezing temperature or melting temperature of zero. So certain types of phase transitions, actually not the freezing transition I described, but other types of phase transitions are intimately associated with power laws. So what I want to do is first describe um, one of the simplest models of a phase transition that shows this power law behavior. And then I'll talk a little bit about universality of exponents and end with some thoughts about the extent to which phase transitions are a viable explanation for many of the power laws that we see. All right, so I'll begin by talking about a, a model known as percolation. And here's the setup for this. So we're gonna have some sort of a lattice and I'll draw a small one, a very small one. Um, and let's see, normally one would use a square grid, but uh, my scales are off, so it's a rectangle, but that's fine. And what we do is we would color in each square with some probability P. So color each square with probability so maybe I would pick p to be 0.2 and then I would um, throw a five-sided die if such a thing existed or <clears throat> use a random number generator and fill in this one with probability 0.2 fill this one in with probability 0.2 so all the probabilities are independent and if I did that who knows, maybe I would get something that looks like this. Of course, it would be different every time. It's a random, it's a random process. And we'll be interested in much larger lattices. And then, um, even then, interested in the properties of this system as the lattice size goes to infinity. So there are some questions that we could ask about this. We could say, what's the probability that the largest cluster spans the shape, meaning it goes from one side to another. So let's see, probability that largest cluster spans the lattice. Um, again, in the limit that uh, this is a very large, the lattice gets very, very large. So if P is really small, 5%, 10%, we only color in 5 or 10%, it's going to be extremely unlikely that we're going to get a cluster that extends um, all the way from one side to another. On the other hand, if P is large, 90%, 95%, then almost surely we would have a cluster that spans the lattice. And so it turns out that if one were to make a plot of this quantity, one would see behavior that looks something like this. So for a whole range of p-values, there's no probability that the largest cluster spans the lattice. But at some special critical value of p, again, p is the filling probability, the um, probability that we have spanning goes up suddenly from zero. And this is um, starts with an infinite slope. It goes right, st straight up initially. So um, this particular, this special p-value is known as pc. That's the critical uh, pc for critical. It's a critical value at which the transition occurs. So this is sort of like water freezing or melting. There's a sudden transition. 
on one side of the transition we have one story zero chance of spanning on the other side we have a qualitatively different story um, and it turns out that for this system the critical probability is 0 0.593 and it's been calculated out to many more digits than that so the main thing that I want to get at here is that there is a phase transition a sudden transition from one um, type of behavior to another. All right, another thing that we could ask about is the size of um, the average cluster. So the size of the average uh, cluster is going to increase with uh, filling probability. As we have more and more of these squares filled in, the clusters are going to be larger and larger. So if we were to plot that, we would get a shape. Um, the, the graph would look like this. And this is a figure from uh, the paper by Mark Newman on Pareto and Power Laws, the review paper. Um, and the discussion in this video very closely follows Mark's development. And I'll use a few more of, of his figures. So consult his paper um, for more details. It's very clear um, and, and, um, and cogent. So um, plotted here is the mean cluster size. And then on the axis here is P. And we see that the mean cluster size goes up and up and up as we get closer to this um, transition. Um, it's also interesting to look at what these lattices look like. And so let me show you a picture of those. Um, and again, this is from the review paper by Mark Newman. So this is for the filling probability small, well below the critical transition. And it's pretty easy to see. Maybe if you squint a little, it's, maybe it's not quite large enough on the screen, but that um, the the clusters tend to be pretty small, and you can't um, sort of go all the way from one side to another walking across only the black squares, because the black squares, there are not that many of them, um, and there are gaps between them. This here is above the transition. So here you could see it'd be pretty easy to walk across the lattice only going on black squares. And here the average cluster size is um, the same size as the lattice. This is the critical value here. This is right at the transition, this point there. And it's a little hard to see, but we have um, a scale-free behavior here. There's some clue that that's happening because we see a diverging mean and we're, we're sort of learning that gee, a, a system that doesn't have a mean might have a long tail, might be described by a power law. Um, but it turns out that the um, distribution of cluster sizes here is scale-free. It's described by a power law. So in other words, it turns out that at the transition point, right where we have this change in behavior, cluster sizes are power law distributed. And here's um, a nice plot of that. Um, again, this is from the Newman Review paper. And so uh, this is a cumulative distribution function or a complementary cumulative distribution function on a log-log scale. And on this axis is the number of clusters with an area of S or greater. And then um, we see a really striking power law, right? So this is very linear behavior. Um, there's some cutoff here because um, this was done experimentally on a computer of 40,000 by 40,000 lattice. You can't have clusters bigger than the size of the lattice, lattice itself. So you'll have some sort of a, a cutoff here. And that's familiar. We've seen again and again that these in real systems, um, there's an upper and lower scale. Um, here the lower scale is you can't have a cluster that's smaller than one box right? Because we don't have sub boxes, there's just one box. So anyway, that defines these two scales. But there's this very nice, very evident scaling behavior here. 
And so what that means is, is that um, the cumulative distribution of uh, cluster sizes is distributed according to a power law. And that's not just a numerical result. There's some very good theory um, explaining um, why that has to be the case. So um, stepping back for a moment, what we're seeing is that we see at the critical point, right at this special p-value, um, a power law distribution in the um, cluster size. And it turns out that other physical quantities, other quantities, are also power law distributed. So if we were to look at, say, like the how the correlation, site-to-site uh, -site correlation behaved, that also would be power law. In other sorts of models, uh, the specific heat might um, be power law distributed, the magnetization or the susceptibility. So this is a very general result. At these types of um, phase transitions, we tend to see um, almost always quantities that are power law distributed. So here we have another mechanism for generating power laws. Um, power laws are generated by systems that undergo phase transitions. They're generated only at the, um, or very near, the transition point.